It became known about a special operation by Kiev, during which 102 occupiers, including Kadyrovites, surrendered. Military expert of Ukraine Alexander Kovalenko decided to analyze the situation around Russian prisoners of war on his social media page. The expert stated that Ukrainian defenders are already running out of blue tape and a collection for its purchase will soon be announced. Kovalenko also stated that there are currently between 2 and 2.5 thousand Russian servicemen in captivity, but most of them are conscripts. At the same time, we should not forget that there are up to 10,000 servicemen of the Russian armed forces on the territory of the Kursk region. It turns out that in almost two weeks of fighting, up to 25% of the soldiers of Putin's army were captured. At the same time, it is also unknown how many of these 10,000 became 200s and 300s. At present, there is more or less verified information only on prisoners of war. The most interesting thing is that conscripts were also captured this week, which means that Putin has not removed them from the front lines. This situation clearly shows that the Russian Defense Ministry is facing a resource crisis. The more occupiers surrender to the Ukrainian armed forces, the greater the chance that Ukrainian prisoners of war will soon return home. The Financial Times reported that representatives of Ukraine and Russia begin negotiations on the exchange of prisoners of war in the Kursk region. The fact that work was underway to prepare the exchange was confirmed to the publication by Ukrainian intelligence. However, the exact number of Russian soldiers captured by the Ukrainian armed forces during their entry into the Kursk region has not been disclosed. However, the publication noted that according to government and military officials, the number could be in the hundreds. Let us recall that earlier, Ombudsman Dmitry Lubinets reported that the Russian side is taking the initiative to begin negotiations on this issue. The Russians claim that the Ukrainian army is trying to blow up a bridge in the Kursk region near the settlement of Glushkovo. Several Z-War correspondents reported that the bridge across the Syme River was attacked by missiles of the Ukrainian armed forces, but managed to survive. Large holes up to a meter in diameter are visible in the road surface. The Russians warn that the bridge could eventually be blown up. Russian propagandist Roman Alakine reports that the attack on the bridge took place last night. This is an alarm bell, because the second strike with completely different weapons shows that they will continue to strike and try to destroy the bridge completely, he writes. According to him, blowing up the bridge will make it difficult for the Russian military to deliver ammunition and reserves. In response, the propagandist demands that the bridges across the Dnieper be destroyed. Britain did not give Ukraine permission to use Storm Shadow long-range missiles transferred to Kyiv against targets in the Kursk region during the rapid offensive operation. The Telegraph writes about this, citing a source in the UK government. The publication noted that London had not changed its position on the use of its missiles supplied to Kyiv to self-defense and not for conducting offensive operations on Russian territory. We have clearly stated that the equipment provided by Great Britain is intended for the defense of Ukraine. The source told the publication. It also reports that the decision on what purposes the Ukrainian armed forces can use Storm Shadow for also depends on France, which developed these missiles together with Britain. Ukraine also asked the US to use long-range ATA CMS missiles during the breakthrough into the Kursk region of the Russian Federation. Washington has not yet given its consent, the Telegraph notes. Earlier, President Zelensky, against the backdrop of the breakthrough of the Russian border and the offensive of the Ukrainian army near Kursk, instructed the Foreign Ministry and the Defense Ministry to seek permission from Western partners to use their long-range weapons. The head of state stated that this would speed up Putin's political end and the military defeat of the Russian Federation. But Dmitro Levos, international political analyst at the United Ukraine think tank, believes that Western partners don't prohibit Ukraine from using their weapons on Russian territory as Ukraine operates within the framework of international law. He shared this opinion on Espresso TV. There is nothing fundamentally new about the authorization to use our partners' weapons. None of our partners have prohibited us from using their weapons on Russian territory. The only restriction applies to long-range missiles that are of operational and strategic significance. 
We are not forbidden to use vehicles, artillery and other tactical level weapons, Levos explained. He emphasized that Ukraine operates within the framework of international law and is entitled to use various methods to defend against Russian aggression. We are not prohibited from using vehicles, artillery and other types of weapons as we act in accordance with international law. We have the right to use various means to repel Russia's aggression. Moreover, for the West, the weapons we use on Russian territory do not carry significant symbolic meaning and are not deployed deep within Russian territories, he added.